Hey guys, it's us again from Switzerland, Bad Ragaz. Um, this time again in English, especially directed at our fans in the States, in the US, in South America. My name is Christoph Bürkam. I'm editor and reporter with Borussia Dortmund and you probably know the guy right next to me. It's obviously Patrick Obermoyela. Hi Christoph. Thanks for taking the time again. Good to be here, good to see you. So last time uh, we were here online uh, two days ago mm -hmm. and um, that was obviously before midday and that was for our fans in Asia. Asian, we got a lot of great questions. A lot of great questions. So that was yeah. from Vietnam, uh, China, Korea, Japan, Korea. Yeah, yeah I think my it. favorite was from Korea, uh, and that was Ovo. Oh, please tell us about a funny <laughs> story that you went through during your time here as a player. Yeah. And uh, well, you basically mentioned a certain game in Düsseldorf, and right. uh, Cup that game. ended up in a burger joint. It did actually. Yeah, I got sent off, and uh, the team had to go through extra time and penalties without a man, or oh, with a man left let's say that way and uh, to to make it up to them I invited them on the way back invited them to uh, to a to a famous burger restaurant yeah. and uh, we couldn't go through the drive-through because That's obviously the, the, the That's team the bus team bus is a little little too big yeah. for that so we stopped in front of the the restaurant everybody got out fully suited in, in yeah. BVB clothes our head coach Jürgen Klopp was the first one pushed everybody yeah. out the way and said no my order has to be here first I'm really hungry <laughs> and uh, yeah I uh, had to pay the bill, but that was the least I could do after I yeah, yeah. let them have a hard time I like in the, the game. I like the idea of the order when you sort of try to go through the uh, drive through with a bus. So <laughs> let's have 65 <laughs> cheeseburgers yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a thousand chicken McNuggets, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so, but this time, uh, first and foremost, we are addressing this stream to our fans in the US and we'll have a lot of questions from you guys later on. But before that, we obviously want to talk about what's up today. So we're going to be live for at least half an hour, showing you some impressions from the training that's happening right now and you'll see one face on the oh, yeah. pitch training with the team exciting it's a bit emotional isn't it i mean you, play, it you played with him of course in, we played together now yeah. we're neighbors and it's really good to see him he's he's uh leaving the pitch actually right now but yeah, he already, there, yeah. already took part yeah. in, in in the first part of the and he practice. got a round of applause from his teammates of course they welcomed him back since he was really out yeah. for a long time so who are we talking about we're talking about Marcel schmelzer obviously and yeah. uh, now he goes over to do some some extra work some individual yeah. work but he he took part in the first part of the training that's always good as a player coming out of rehab if you if you are able to finally be on the pitch with the guys even if it's just for 20 minutes or so or half an hour and not for all of it but um, it, it feels better it feels right to be amongst the, the players yeah so we had a bit of an athletic uh, training going on um, before the lunch break and now obviously we're expecting some 90 minute full training right. um, why does it make sense to split the day into a rather athletic training and then this sort of proper football training? I mean, we're, we're in pre-season and you want to, you know, give the buddy some, some, some moments where he really has to think about what to do and, and you know, how to improve. And, and you can do that by mixing it all up, but sometimes yeah. it's better to, to focus on, on one individual thing like muscle building or, or strengthening or uh, becoming fast or whatever and then it, it makes sense to to give that a little bit more time a little bit more focus and not just have it as a part of a regular practice so you can mm. just work more focused actually mm. so you told me that back in your days there was a lot less training with the ball a lot more in running pre -season, in yeah, pre-season a lot more yeah. running in pre-season but you did have those athletic yeah uh, we did we did actually we we went to the gym and, and lifted weights and and did yeah. stretching or, or strengthening uh, core strengthening uh, exercises we did that all but we did a lot of running without the ball which uh, wasn't our favorite uh, yeah. part of, of pre-season but it was important I think building and, uh, the basics right building the basis and and uh, you can work from there so yeah, yeah. but these guys it all developed it's all different now and they in, involve that in in the in the football in the game actually yeah. the intensity is is different in in the games they have now and so they they're gonna be they're gonna be really fit they're gonna be they're running this. right now isn't it yeah they do uh sprints actually i noticed they do that before every practice or Hmm. In the beginning of every practice, they do some sprinting. It's, it's often just five, five rounds, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, they do five sprints to really go for it, and then so they had a little bit of a warm up. They played a little uh, um, um, game, a little five against two, and now they have five runs, and then they will go to probably some 
passing routines, maybe some tactical stuff. I mean, obviously, uh, they're working on a, on their tactical uh, um, skills later as on, a team, yeah. yes. But um, first of all, some physical stuff. Yeah, we see here coming back the new guy. Daniel, Daniel Marlin, Marlin right. you just had an interview with him. I had a nice interview, he's a nice guy And actually. it's about to go online any minute, I understand. Okay. But please stay with us. Yes, yes, stay here. <laughs> please yeah, stay with us. We'll we'll the <laughs> but if you could give away something uh, from that, that interview, I think what, what struck me was that one of the biggest influences in him finding his love and passion for football was actually his grandmother his grandmother that was that was something yeah. that that uh, stuck with me as well um a little unusual usually yeah. you, know, you grow up kicking the ball around with your brother maybe probably father yeah. and and he did that with uh, his his grandmother obviously she has a big passion for football yeah. as well she so. was super stubborn he said like i had to stop the ball shoot the ball for hours and hours <laughs> really like, uh, really exercises yeah. yeah no but that was funny and for him he's a young guy he likes to cook that's yeah. probably something that's uh, it's uh, unusual as well. Often, right? yeah. yeah, and um, the rest you have to see in that interview. Yeah, uh, it's you, use, you mentioned it, it's going to be online, and s please stay with us for another twenty-five minutes here on this live stream for exactly. the practice. And then but you after can head that, over yes, to that after that, absolutely. Right. So um, slowly, uh, our players are sort of coming back, dropping into the hotel, mm -hmm. the ones that were oh. at the Euros. And uh, well, if you are on our channels every now and then, you probably already read that our uh, three guys from Belgium are, are with us, but uh, only really recently. So I actually do not expect them. I mean, they just arrived no, like two yeah. hours ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They wouldn't be and here, depending right? Depending on how far they traveled, it wouldn't be yeah. wouldn't be good to have them on the pitch. And they probably need a couple of days to adapt to that. They have they will have individual yeah. um, exercises, but, bit of, of lifting weights, bit of running, and then they will join the team probably maybe tomorrow in the afternoon already. Yeah. So um, we'll see, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's, but Torgan Hazard, really Axel Witzel and Thomas Munier are with us now, are with the team now, and so are Emre Can and Mats Hummels, Mats Hummels yep. who returned uh, a few days back, and mm -hmm. they already are in sort of a training routine. I haven't seen them actually playing with the ball yet, but uh, they're yep. building up and uh, doing all sorts of stretching in the tent right. to they're our not, right They're not, side. you know, they don't start from scratch since uh, since they are obviously yeah. had a training plan for their off time. Yeah. But um, yeah, the body needs a, a couple of days to be as, let's say, as fast, as, as quick, as strong as these guys are already. They have mm -hmm. a couple of weeks of practice in the legs already. So yeah, yeah it wouldn't be fair to Mm. to involve them too fast. But the first competitive game is coming up fairly soon now. So That's true. do you see them actually playing a whole 90 minutes in the cup against Wiesbaden in, what, what is it, nine days? Uh, it's a good question. Actually, yeah, nine days should be correct. Um, I, I, I don't think so, actually. I mean, yeah. you need to work with the team. You need to learn the new, uh, um, the new tactic, the new system that Marco Rosa wants to play. And uh, of course, become game ready, get in game shape, and you need a bit of time for that. It's not possible probably to do that in a week. It would be too risky um, to, to injure yourself uh, if you have to go uh, in, a, in a cup game. And it's going to be a tough one, I tell you that so yeah. far. It's going uh, already, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, in Wiesbaden, they're a little ahead in the schedule, so yeah. they're, they're probably a little fitter, I would say, or okay. more fit as our guys are. And um, so it's it's going to be a tough fight probably i mean the quality obviously is, is on our side yeah but uh they they gonna challenge us the best way they can and yeah. it's going to be physical probably i just got an update on my uh, mobile phone from uh -huh. our dear colleague uh, toby and uh, he said that the your interview with uh, daniel malen will go online on youtube in exactly two hours so okay. you're not missing anything no. tune back in in Stay two hours for that <laughs> interview <laughs> Uh, so, coming uh, to your questions, uh, yeah. guys, from um, this one's from our Twitter um, channel, Black and Yellow. Black Yellow. Um, do you think any young players from the under 19 or under 21 team can play a role with the first team in the upcoming season? Um, that's that's an interesting uh, uh, question. So far, these guys really did a great job of um, of of not, you know 
being noticed as uh, as new members True. or as, as players from from a youth team or under 20 23 tre uh, team so they that's obviously a good thing and right. um, they are very talented and they right. really have the right mindset and they are obviously fighting for yeah. for maybe some more chances to prove themselves so right. um i don't know i mean we have a, a good squad we have a huge uh, not a huge squad but a but a big squad and but you need talents every now and then and it's uh, fresh blood is always something good Yus yusuf amokoko is a youth player and he will definitely be uh, amongst uh, the players we will see more often but um yeah i'm i'm really curious about the um S the, the two central defenders because I mean no, obviously Koulibaly. Antonios Papadopoulos oh, and, okay. uh, and Maloney um, and Maloney Leonard Maloney they yeah. had to step in and they're playing they a lot and they're well. getting their time but um, yeah. you know it from from what we see on the pitch in the in the in the training matches but as well here in uh, every day's training I don't see them really giving way that easily no no of course as I'm uh, those two in particular are really prominent this uh, preseason yeah. they're very vocal they're very intense in the games yeah. in practice they're not holding back they're not shy at all yeah and uh, i already noticed that marco rose noticed that exactly and, and, and likes that uh, and likes that as well yeah. so th th that might be a, a good chance for those two to become a, a real and, and and a solid part of of the first team but yeah. you never know i mean we have zagadu probably coming back yeah um Koulibaly, Koulibaly. uh will be will be back hopefully in, in not too far future so um we have a couple of central defenders Mats Hummels, akanji yeah. uh, who uh, akanji will join after this uh, training camp so it's 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 a tough way yeah. to fight yourself in into that position but um they're doing a great job so far yeah. and let's not forget our second team the under uh, 23 they uh, they got promoted to the third league which is a tough league yeah. and uh, their head coach and omas were probably more than happy to get some of his players back yeah of course some I mean, days in. they had to fill in since our our um regular i would say regular players uh, were at the internationals in, during the summer and they had some extra vacation time that's why they had to step in and fill up but they're already playing uh, um, um championship games yeah and of course he wants his players back but if they keep on going, if they keep exactly. on uh, working like they do, <laughs> he might will miss them yeah. a little longer or or from time to time. Yeah. By the way, if you didn't notice, our second team, the under-23 team, won their first the match first in the game, third yeah. league. And they're playing this Saturday their first home match in the famous Rote Erde Stadium, our old stadium next to the Signal Iduna Park. And obviously we wish them best of luck. So it's getting noisy, Erling ha Haaland just scoring. Um, yeah. Over, talk us through what's happening. Oh, it's a it's a very nice game actually. It's a it's a very small field. There's not a lot of space, and it's really, really intense, really fast. It's about you know, shooting, scoring real quick, and defending. You become a defender right after you yeah. try to shoot a goal. You have to defend on the other side, and uh, there's no time. So reaction. It's all about reacting fast, transition from offense to defense, which is something that Marco Rosa really. Yeah. Uh, um, um, puts focus in. Uh, he yeah. wants that that pressing. He wants that transition fast. From if you lose the ball, get it back as fast as, as possible. Fast as can. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, that's a game that's perfectly made for that. We had Erling Haaland actually missing the goal, and uh, he answered that with a high pitched nine. <laughs> so <laughs> you can see yeah. it was not a swear word, but he's he's diving into German as well. So, what else do we have? Um, well, that's a tricky one. Who is Marco yes. Rosa's favorite player in the squad? And who does he think <laughs> has great potential from the second team? Well, we already mentioned yeah, sort of the second team. I don't think he really has a favorite player. No. I know from, from Marco Reus that they, um, even in, in, in Marco's uh, holidays, that they had uh, telephone conversations every but now and then. But he is the his captain. captain yeah, no? yeah. So that, that I wouldn't... I wouldn't uh, W wouldn't say that's his f favorite player just because he had a phone call with him. That because yeah. no, you have to talk to your captain, and especially when you're the new coach. You have to get to know everyone yeah. uh, at first. So he's not really, uh, or he, he didn't meet everybody yet. There are still players to come. So how could yeah. he could he uh, uh, choose 
his favorite <laughs> and i don't think a coach should choose yeah. and should have a favorite yeah. player so um, there are important players there are players that probably uh, will talk to the coach more just mm. because of their role in the yeah. team um but it's not about uh be be uh being closer the, to the coach or being more popular right. to the coach i mean there's there, there's always a circle of experienced players right. that that make the sort of um bridge to the to the, to exactly. the head coach isn't yeah, it it's it's uh so it's like we five, say we say four it's or five, the right hand it? the right hand man or yeah. something so yeah. it's the it's the the extension of of marco rose's arm so to yeah. say um and of course there's the captain there are yeah. probably players like Mats Hummels, Emre yeah. Can, Axel Lucas Witzel, Pichek Lucas used to Pichek be one, used to be one. Yeah. Um, not for, for Rose but before before yeah. he left and um, so there are some players that are closer to the coach but not uh, on you know not when it comes to liking somebody more yeah. or less but thanks for that question and we're heading on to the next one which is your first impression of the new players mm -hmm. say uh, well I I explicitly mentioned uh, Malen mm -hmm. Kamara Kulibali and Koba well we can talk about Kulibali he's still in rehab right with, he's uh, running with Daxo. I think uh, Daxo Dan Axel Zagadou he's pretty much as you'd say right now the onboarding manager for him <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. so he's and the big brother probably. yeah he's with him yeah all the time and um Yeah, well, they're more or less in the same stage of rehab, yeah. so we are expecting them back soon. But um, yeah, to touch on on Daniel Marlin, yeah. he's he's with the team now a couple of days. We haven't seen too much, obviously, but yeah. what you can tell is that he's very technical. He's very fast. Yeah, exactly. Um, he knows exactly where the goal is. Has a good good um, 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 shot with yeah. with probably yeah, but both feet actually, and uh, so that's it's going to be exciting to to see him really go in an actual game yeah. um camera you notice is a young player um can play midfield did play some some center defense in in practice as yeah. well again a technical player with a lot of skills but um but also of course is has a lot of potential left yeah. to to uh, develop so can i say we'll one thing he doesn't have the body of such a young No, he no, really looks no. He really like looks really proper, strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he looks really strong. So he, he doesn't need to catch up physically, but yeah. of course, um, no need yeah. for that. We'll we'll see how the development will will go. But an interesting yeah. player overall. And another player mentioned here. So what what do you make of Gregor Kobel so far? Good goalkeeper. We have seen uh, a couple of um, um, exercise, a couple of of um, training sessions where he really performed good. Had some great saves. Um, I saw him in the in the game or tournament against Bochum. That wasn't mm. too too much of work, I'd say. Yeah. Um, so we couldn't couldn't uh, give him um, numbers there, but but he has he has good quality. He good reflexes, good reach. Yeah. And um, yeah, we've seen some stuff yesterday after the practice. Erling Haaland, Mukoko, all these guys did some shooting, and he did some <laughs> flying. I'd say Ooh. it was really really. Uh, Uh, good to see that and we'll see how he develops i mean yeah. it's it's an interesting uh, addition yeah i'd say the same i mean he's he's definitely leaving a mark here uh, uh, and he, one thing that stands out is that he actually cut short his holidays to to join right. the team as yeah. soon as he could he wasn't playing at the euros but still he didn't have that much of a holiday really. exactly and talking about mindset that's something that of course says something to the coach yeah. says something to your teammates as well and uh, and really shows that he he wants to be here. he wants to work he wants to to secure that that uh, number one spot in the team as a goalkeeper and uh, yeah on a good way i'd yeah. say Another question that's actually for uh, Marco Reus, but we, we'll try to do our best here. Uh, <laughs> isn't it weird with no Piszczek? Oh, I think it's weird for a it lot is. of players, not just Marco Reus, uh, Marcel yeah. Schmelzer, somebody who was very yeah. close to Piszczek. Um, Jule Brandt mentioned in an interview where we did a live stream for, for Asia uh, in, in Dortmund um, that he, he is missing uh, yeah. Piszczek. They always sat together and drank coffee together and it's strange to not have him there. So yeah. a lot of players actually feel that gap that uh, Lukas Piszczek left. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Marco Reus actually said the same thing in an interview he did for uh, BBB TV that it's, it's odd. When yeah. when he came back to the to the training facilities and realized for the first time that he's not there. Yeah, it's only. I mean, it's, 
if you if you look at the team, he was Lucas Pischek was there before Marco Reus. Yeah. Uh, Lucas Pischek only only Mats Hummels actually is uh, somebody who was there before Lucas Pischek came aboard, but Hummels left, so so um, and came back. So um, yeah, yeah, it's weird to not see Pichu out here actually. Yeah. yeah? Now this is uh, an intriguing question. From what you see in training daily, which tactic? Rose is going to rely on the most. <laughs> well, you you, you oh, we'll mentioned see. it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but but it's it's it's. I don't think they they have that sorted out yet. They're yeah. still um, um, trying to figure out what really what real system they want to play. Yeah. But it's going to be an intense football. It's going to be high speed, chasing the ball, that is and certain. with the ball, be be focused, be determined, and straight towards the goal as fast as right. possible. So, it's going to be high intense football, and yeah. um, that's. That's what we see every day in practice, what Marco Rose is working on with this team. Yeah. And one thing he did mention is that so far he's only got two central, like really proper two yeah. central defenders, so he couldn't play three in a, a three line back, yeah. yet. I mean, he, pr he probably will in, in the future. Just I mean, you, 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 you should be able to switch it up. You should be able to play multiple systems. and. Um, But, but it needs the whole team uh, to be here and yeah. to work on that and uh, to, to, to get it in you and to really make it become, how, how do you say, automatic, yeah. you know, and, 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 and that it feels right. And uh, so now Emma John is somebody who, who can play uh, in a three-back role. Mats Hummels obviously knows how to do that. Uh, I don't know what, what uh, Papa and uh, Leonard Maloney, yeah. what those uh, guys were playing in the, in the under-23 team or, or practicing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it Oop, takes I mean, probably some time to really figure yeah. out what will be the best tactical system for, for the squad. And we'll have to... Uh, admit that there are some players here that you definitely want to see shining in their position as good as they can. And we just had Rafa Guerrero passing yeah. by. He came from the, uh, I think, from the bike, uh, a bike session today. Uh, so he's back with us as well. And obviously, he is one of the best left backs in in Europe, no doubt. And left uh, backs slash left left wing. Yeah, left wing. Yeah, that's that, that's exactly <laughs> yeah. where I want to 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 dig in. You need to figure out where he's at his best. Yeah, and and we have players that that are really really good in multiple positions in multiple systems. But who will fit? What what feels right for Marco Rose? That's something that probably he and his team will keep on working and then decide. Maybe even after the the first yeah. round of the DFB Cup of the German Cup. So we'll see. Okay. So thanks for that question. Next question: Who is going to be the toughest opponent this season? I reckon I mean, this this is probably <laughs> regarding the Bundesliga, I, not the Champions I League. I think I think we don't know who we ha who we will play in Champions League, so th yeah. couldn't go there. But obviously the Bundesliga, there is Bayern Munich, and yeah. it's always the the toughest uh, um, to beat to become champion. Yeah. They got a and new head coach. He's probably super motivated coach. to leave his his yeah. mark. They're still trying to figure out their team as well and and how it all works. They the preseason for them so far wasn't you know all. All flowers and, and fun, mm. but um, but obviously it's uh, it's a very strong team, very strong club, and they will probably be the strongest contender for for a championship. Yeah, uh, but there's RB Leipzig. There's uh, I don't know about Wolfsburg if they can keep it mm. up and do it one more time. With and Mark van Bommel. Yes, a new head coach as well. Uh, so many, so many things have uh, changed and rotated in the Bundesliga. So it's going to be interesting to yeah. see how how it all comes together. Yeah, I'm going to say an odd thing now. The toughest opponent is always the next opponent. Oh. But honestly, I'm, this time I mean it because <laughs> Wiesbaden, um, a team that's obviously aware of the fact that yeah. we had a preseason with some of the vital pillars of this team missing, missing yeah. they're probably going to in there with Absolutely. flying colors and can say, well, they're, this they, might be our chance. They they think they have a chance, and of course they do, <laughs> because yeah. it starts as at zero zero. Sure. But um, yeah, they will they will keep it up and, and bring the fight to us. That's for sure. They know that we have a, uh, I would say, difficult preseason with all the things we just talked about, and uh, yeah. They see that as their chance, and that rightfully so. So we have to do a good job and, and make sure that nobody really sees that it's not been uh, very optimal how we've been practicing so far, how the team you know, is building at the moment. 
We just had a tweet coming in from Jude Bellingham himself from the holidays. Really? Jude, if you're listening, <laughs> we're missing you. Uh, he's yeah, he's actually do. he's commenting on the fact that uh, Marcel Schmelzer is back in team training, right, and right. he he says it's it's he loves to see this. Brilliant. Yeah, we can't well, wait to have Jude. Exactly, back. we I love mean, to see you back, man. Yeah, yeah. it's a, it's exciting. He's such, such an exciting player. I did the first interview last year when he just joined yeah, right the club. Here. We did it here in Bad Ragaz, and man, has he developed. So yeah. yeah. I, Tip the hat to, to that and uh, hopefully to, to see even more development and more yeah. great things from this young guy. I remember you saying to him like, man, you're so bold, full of confidence. Yeah. Where does all that confidence come from? And now just one season later, we all know. <laughs> we all know. Yeah, I mean, he really backed it up. And uh, so but it, it's just good to see. And there's still more to come. And I'm, I'm, I really think he could be a key figure in Marco Rose's uh, uh, system and, and plans because the, the system that we have seen quite often uh, up to now is, uh, is a system where Jude Bellingham would fit perfectly as yeah. a number six player. But, you know, he has to bring the fight. We have some more players yeah. who want that position, so we'll see. Yeah. There's a question that's probably directed at me. Will you make more contents with English or other languages? Well. We're definitely Ooh. giving you regular content Great. in English because, I mean, we got this guy, Patrick Obamuela, sitting here. <laughs> yeah. And no, I mean, we, we've got players who actually, you know, German is not their, their first language, uh, like Daniel Mahl, for example. Right. I mean, he'll probably understand some German, um, but uh, he preferred to do the interview in English. And I mean, Erling Haaland, the same, he, he's, he's speaking decent German, but we're doing most of our stuff with him in English. So, yes, we're going to to produce a lot of content in English yeah. and let's keep in mind all of the stuff that we produce in German we'll always put some English subtitles with that so uh, everything should be available for you guys out there at least I hope yeah that of is, course is we do, I mean we have a huge and growing fan base in yeah. in the US but in other countries where they do uh, prefer English um, content so of course we're gonna we're gonna build and, and produce yeah. more stuff there which player is in best shape? So now, now over here come your insides. <laughs> Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. They all look really fit. They all look look as as the they're at the right at the right point in yeah. preseason already. So I, I couldn't I couldn't say. I we should say. mention that some of the under twenty three players they already had another a training full, camp. A full they had a full preseason yeah. already yeah. Yeah. because their season started uh, a week ago. Yeah. And uh, and they're doing an, another one here with the pros with the first team. So with so no disregard they're probably the fittest, they're right? They're probably the fittest, yeah. And uh, but, but you know what, talking about fitness, what I really like about this preseason, Marco Reus does a full preseason. Yeah, it's, good to see that. it's been the last time it was 2017. So four years ago was the last time that Marco Reus really had a, a full preseason to to set the basis for for a good season. Uh -huh. And he mentioned to me already that he of course feels the, the legs and stuff. I mm. mean, they are working hard, but he feels so confident that this year could really become a great year for him as well personally because he just feels that his body is 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 um, or needed uh, a preseason to to have a good basis to to play a good season and yeah that's that's something I, I i really enjoy him seeing working every day no nothing no minor injuries nothing yeah. so far and uh, good so point that, that that looks good mm. that looks good i think we're coming for the last fan question for today and that's What's the match you're looking forward to the most this season? Uh, yet again, I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in the Champions League. This, this is always exciting. Yeah. There could be great names coming to Dortmund or we, we're going to go there. And that, that could be, that it could be a, a great game. But in the Bundesliga, of course, the, the big ones. I mean, yeah. you need those. We're not those playing Schalke, though. No, we're not. <laughs> They're not there that's anymore. That's so odd. That's 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 really odd. Bochum is there now. They yeah. promoted, so that's kind of derby. It's really next door neighbor to Dortmund, and uh, so we'll see about that. But yeah, we play against Leipzig. We play against a Bayern Munich. Exciting games, good teams, and you need those points if you want to become a champion. Yeah. And I mean. Every player wants that. Every player wants to, to have a great season, finishing it with a title. We did the last year. Uh, not many would have thought so, mid, mm. mid through the season, I'd say. Um, but in the end, it was a, a really good season and we want to 
We, we want to do one, one better. Okay. I'd like that. I'd like one better. I'd Just like that idea too. <laughs> yeah, we'll, well see. A, a, a game that I'm definitely looking forward to is our first home game against Frankfurt because we'll have something like 20 or 25,000 yeah. fans in the stadium. Obviously, the Signal Iduna Park has a capacity of 81,365, but, well, 25 is already a number. Yeah. And I think there are hopes that we'll see bigger numbers during the season. At least I hope that will be possible. So yes, the game I'm looking forward to the most is our first sold out game. Yeah, I mean having having fans back in the stadium is right. That the energy is going to be yeah. goosebumps for a whole week. Absolutely. I <laughs> mean I I, I re still remember when after the first lockdown there were a couple of fans allowed back. It was yeah. about 10,000 or something or 15. I'm I'm not sure. And that was great again and it was a real goosebump atmosphere and and now to have 25,000 that that's 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 proper. Yeah, I it's mean, decent. It's yeah. not going to be the yellow wall, obviously. No, it could fit, but it's not allowed. Yeah, that would be it's crazy to, <laughs> to do. The, well, we got 25,000 <laughs> here just, just there, there, one terrace. The yeah. yeah, but uh, no, obviously no standing uh, uh, places yeah, available. Only seating uh, seats, and um, yeah, we'll see how we how we go and where we go from there. But it's going to be good to have fans and to feel that connection again between fans and the team on the pitch. Yeah, I think before we go, we'll look onto the onto the action yeah for another minute i have to say well everyone obviously has to move quite a bit but julian brandt is all over, all the, place. over the place he feels really good another player who could really um get something out of that new system that we've yeah. been practicing a couple of days now yeah. and um yeah He seems to be in a good shape. He he had some talks with the coach. He probably mm. uh, told him that he has a big chance to to play a decent role. And um, yeah, he looks motivated. He looks fit, and we know what he can do. So yeah, it's going to be good to see so many good football players. Just just talk about it. You have Jule Brand. You have Marco Reus, Gio Reyna, Erling Haaland, Yusuf Mukoko is there. Yeah. yeah, Daniel Marlin now is there. So yeah. ah, it's, it, it could be. It could be a great, great season. When it all comes together and it all fits well, there's something possible there. Yes, and I mean, this training camp, it's not over yet. We still got uh, yeah. one game to come tomorrow against Bologna, uh, 5 p.m. our time. And um, I think if we would sum up this training camp so far, Apart from the weather, was a bit more rain than <laughs> today. It's great. Yeah, today is brilliant. <laughs> today is I mean, great. today is just yeah. epic at weather. Actually, uh, the uh, the look, scenery is yeah, just like I mean, uh, just look at the mount, like the the backdrop. It looks yeah, the backdrop with the clouds. It looks unreal. Mountains. Almost, yeah, it looks yeah. unreal. Somebody put it there just yeah, on screen. You it's know? a postcard. Actually, it's <laughs> something like wallpaper. It's, postcard, it's like, yeah. wallpaper. it's like yeah. wallpaper. Yeah. So, but as we as we see uh, Marco Rosa um, trying to start a new formation, there, I think. The spirit in the team, as you would expect, is they are really high, really high spirits here. Yeah, um, and, and good, so they're all in a good mood. They're all exhausted because they really, really, really work hard, but they keep up a good mood. And, that, and that's, that's good. Good to yeah. see. So the team comes really close together. They enjoy working hard with each other. And uh, that could become a, a, a great, great team on the pitch and, and do some, some, some good there for us. Great. Well, half an hour is actually passing like nothing, isn't it? Incredible. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> notice. It's already over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we probably have one more minute of, of the training session with all the action there. Yeah. Another good game. Yeah. I'm coming back to that question. Are we going to produce more English content? Yes, but the, our current podcast is in German. It's with Moda Hood, mm -hmm. and he, you probably got that already. If you're following our content, he is extending his contract for another year. So he'll nice. be at least two more years with us. And it will be seven years of Moda Hood and black <laughs> and yellow. Oh, I, I Sounds good see, to me. I want to see that highlight reel at the end because yeah, Moda yeah. Hood. He has some highlights on and off the pitch, and I tell you, off the pitch, it's it's yeah. it, he's one of the most one of the funniest guys yeah. I know, and uh, yeah. yeah, all the BVB TV production stuff with Moda yeah, true. that highlight reel is yeah. amongst the the funniest yeah. stuff we ever produced, probably. Yeah. 
I mean, he's probably officially it's a contract as a professional footballer, but he could also work in the BVB entertainment business. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. He is an entertainer. And uh, again, on and off the pitch. Yes, but he made such a development. Uh, the did. second bit of the last season. Yeah, so he he really well did. done and, and good for him that he is, he's still with us. And yeah. you, you, you probably agree, you need a mixture of personalities in a team and he's definitely yeah. there for, with Rafa yeah. Guerrero, those yeah. two, you never know what they're yeah, up to. Yeah, you never know. And Danax is like do. Oh, know, yes. He, he seems to never be smiling, but he is, I tell you, he is. <laughs> he's, not, he's just not showing it. And he's really, really funny too. So you need those kind of guys. And uh, Moda Hood really made that position his in the last couple of months of last season. And uh, rightfully so, he extended his contract now. and. Congratulations to that and congratulations for BVB to, to have a player like Mo to their side a little longer. Okay. As they reshuffle their formation, it's time for us to say goodbye probably. So thanks for joining this live stream, guys. Um, yes. Wherever you were watching, whether it was in the US, in South America or wherever on the world, if you follow this in Germany and you think, well, why the heck are they talking in <laughs> English? Well, I told you why, but... Uh, <laughs> You can be sure there will be more live streams from Switzerland yeah. and some of them will be in German. Uh, so coming up tomorrow is a second test match against Bologna. 5 p.m. is the time and um, Saturday then it's the last day here and then the, te uh, the team will head back to Dortmund. And then as we mentioned, it's almost time for the first competitive game, first round of the DFB Pokal. Yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's the not one long. we got in the shelf. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, <laughs> I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait actually to see those guys really go for, for points or for the next round and really fight for it. It's, uh, it's going to be an yeah. exciting season. We got a feeling they're ready. Hope you too. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and see you soon. Bye bye. Cheers.